So today, um, again, thinking about how thankful I am for feedback and insight. I love that I I'm free um, to whimsically look into people, read books, um, follow people. And that's the thing that I'm wanting, you know, for people to do. And I'm also thinking about <clears throat> my life of um, trying to be perfect and prep and how incredible this whole thing is um, because it's less about thinking and believing it's less about prep it's more about um, freeing people up because the power is going to come from the people that are freed up doing it. Um, you know, the times I feel overwhelmed, I'm thinking, well, what's up with that? You know, and it's always maybe I'm doing stuff I don't need to be doing, you know. Um, using all parts of the body, I guess. Well, I would love it if I could do it all, um, then it won't be a co-creation and it won't, it won't be, it won't be amazing. So that's freeing. Um, <clears throat> just all the time we've learned over the years, all the time that we think we need for the management of things and the, and the preparation of things, when maybe it's just as simple as freeing people up. Um, so I'm really liking the push from, I think, James, um, the we and the it coming together more. <clears throat> um, so what is it? What is it that's so different? I think it's I think the thing that is different mm. <clears throat> so I was thinking this morning about Brett talking about the Native Americans and the indigenous people and um, the community that was there and thinking of Carol Black schooling the world and you know um, Megan going to Africa and and all these stories, the common thread is the happiness that you find there. Um, even though from our viewpoint, they have very little. So thinking somewhere along the line, this competitive nature comes in. I'm hearing Tony. This competitive nature comes in. And maybe it was always there, but with our technologies, we figure out a way to compete better. And so we really have gotten more effective. Because if you want to compete, you need to be more effective, more efficient. So we've done that. So I guess calling into question the competitive nature. Because um, if there is competition, efficiency, you need to measure. So now back up and what if we say there is no competition? What if we say um, simply what's the value of being together in a room? 
and with the word value and together thinking Plato we need to question compulsion and so it seems if we want our days to matter, if we want the value to matter when we're together, or if we want it to be valuable when we're together. Um, I think we need to question the compulsion. So, um, it just seems like a very good place to start, logical even. Um, in public education, where there's so many people, so much money, so much of a mindset that is built there. Um, Catherine Schultz's book, again, just, and I guess someone else tweeted an article about young kids are amazing. Older people are amazing, and we're missing that cross-generational hanging out together and the rhizomatic... Um, expertise in that. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. Um, so the we, I believe, is anyone. And the beginning it is facilitating the human spirit towards betterness, mediocre versus breathtakingness, okay? So that's the ultimate, the it of our next phase is what if we simply take out the compulsion of public education what if we stop measuring learning? And instead, to get us back to that natural state, what if we focus on two conversations? One with yourself, a daily reflection, that's your assessment one with others, so that those gatherings do matter. And so, if community is the curriculum, Community is our longing and now our goal, getting away from the competitive efficiency back to the natural state of community, then any type of credentialing, we don't even need credentialing though. I guess the safety net is like our responsibility as human beings to others is do you belong? Are you a member? Somewhere? Are you known by someone? 